Hi, I'm Dave, one of the oil experts here at Greg Distributors. Previously on Propel Oil 101, we discussed just some of the fundamental components of oils and why they're so important for your engine. If this doesn't sound familiar, go back to our intro to oil video and take some time to review it. In this video, we're going to get a little bit more sciency and really look into the chemistry of what makes oil, oil. So as we talked about last time, there's a lot of things going on in your motor oil that helps to protect your engine from wear. Viscosity is arguably the most important factor when selecting a proper oil or lubricant of any kind. Too viscous of an oil and your engine could be sluggish and less efficient. But not viscous enough and your engine could get damaged or seize. However, both high and low viscosity oils are still useful. For example, low viscosity oils are better suited for high speeds, low temperatures, and light loads. While high viscosity oils are used for slow speeds, high temperatures, and heavy loads. To find out the viscosity of your oil, just look at the numbers on the bottle. Most oils you'll see on any shelf will likely be mixed grades or mixed viscosity oils such as 5W30. But single grade motor oils exist as well, even though they are not as common. Now, let's take a look at base oils. A base oil is used to manufacture products including greases, motor oil, and metal processing fluids. Oils require a specific base with particular compositions and properties in order to fulfill the needs of the application it's being used for. Whether or not a crude oil is suitable to be made into a base oil is determined by the concentration of base oil molecules. This means that crude oil is heated in such a way that various distillates can be separated from one another. During the heating process, light and heavy hydrocarbons are separated. The light hydrocarbons can be refined to make gasoline and other fuels, while the heavier ones are suitable for bitumen and base oils. The refining process applies to almost all oils. However, synthetic base oils are either highly refined base oils or man-made molecules that have been synthesized in production facilities. While most of the finished oil product is made up of the base oil, up to 10 to 20% of it can be additives, all to ensure your oil is up for the challenges thrown at it by today's modern combustion engines. Supplemental chemicals, otherwise known as additives, are mixed into the base oil in order to meet the quality requirements for the finished oil product. Additives enhance the base oil's good properties, such as viscosity, and improve the areas where it is deficient, like in rust inhibitors. Let's take a closer look at some common oil additives. First, we have dispersants and detergents. They work as a team to help keep your engine clean. Dispersants are high molecular weight components with long hydrocarbon chains and polar sites that function to disperse sludge, varnish, and soot in oil. Ultimately, keeping these contaminants from forming harmful deposits on metal surfaces in your engine. Detergents are alkenes containing soap molecules that have been oversaturated with CO2 to neutralize the acids formed from combustion, prevent metal corrosion, and reduce high temperature deposits on pistons. They work in tandem with dispersants to ensure that any contaminants in your engine are swept away when you do your next oil change. And, that your engine stays clean throughout its regular use. 
Oxidation is the general attack of the weakest components of the base oil in the presence of oxygen. It ultimately causes acids to form, which result in corrosion and sludge formation. It occurs at all temperatures all of the time, but is accelerated by higher temperatures and by the presence of water, wear metals, and other contaminants. Antioxidants or oxidation inhibitors prevent thickening when hydrocarbons are heated in the presence of oxygen. Oxidation inhibitors are also used to extend the operating life of the oil. They are a sacrificial additive that is consumed while performing their duty, therefore protecting the base oil, and they can be found in almost every lubricating oil and grease. Similarly, there are corrosion and rust inhibitors. Very few systems can completely exclude water, and since water is a necessary ingredient for the oxidative corrosion of metals, rust happens. Rust degrades metal itself and generates particulate abrasives that can wind up causing wear. Through the use of corrosion inhibitors, polar molecules selectively cling to metal surfaces to form a barrier that excludes water. Think of it this way in simplified terms. These additives act like sunscreen, blocking out UV rays from burning your skin. Except in this situation, the UV rays are water and your skin is metal in an engine. Poor point depressants, or PPDs, prevent waxy crystals forming in your oil. So you might ask, why do these crystals form? Well, the pore point of an oil is approximately the lowest temperature where it will remain fluid. In cold temperatures, paraffinic mineral oils can form wax crystals. These solid crystals form an intertwined network like a spider web or a beaver dam that prevents the remaining fluid from flowing. So PPDs reduce the size of the wax crystals in the oil and their interaction with each other, allowing the oil to continue to flow even at low temperatures. Foam inhibitors are another additive, but they do something pretty interesting. You see, foam can be detrimental for your engine, as it allows pockets of air to form where you want your lubricants to be resulting in metal-on-metal metal contact and wear. For those who operate heavy equipment, foaming in your hydraulic oil can compromise the performance of your hydraulic system. Foam inhibitors reduce the formation and longevity of foam by reducing the surface tension between oil and air. If the surface tension is reduced enough, any bubbles that manage to be formed will pop very quickly as they will be unable to hold themselves together. Next is demulsifiers. Demulsibility is the capability of an oil to separate from water. When water gets into the oil, excessive churning can produce emulsions, which are poor lubricants for the average engine. As previously mentioned, water can also promote rust, foaming, and oxidation. Demulsifiers prevent the formation of a stable oil-water mixture, or an emulsion, by changing the tension of the oil so that the water will amalgamate and separate more readily from the oil. This is an important characteristic for lubricants exposed to steam or water so that free water can settle out and be easily drained off at a reservoir without total oil loss. Emulsifiers are the exact opposite of demulsifiers and are used in oil and water-based metalworking fluids and fire-resistant fluids to help create a stable oil and water emulsion. The emulsifier additive can be thought of as a glue binding the oil and water together because normally they would like to separate from each other due to differences in tension and specific gravity. These emulsifiers are important for this kind of metalworking as they lubricate the cutting process while at low cutting speeds. Cool the workpiece while at high cutting speeds. 
and flush any chips away from the cutting zone. Next, we have a very important additive called viscosity index improvers or viscosity modifiers. Viscosity is the measurement of a fluid's resistance to flow. A good Canadian example of viscosity is maple syrup. Maple syrup that's been in the fridge will be slow to pour, meaning it has a high viscosity. But maple syrup that's been sitting on the table in the sunshine all day will readily pour out of the bottle, meaning it has a low viscosity. The higher the temperature, the lower the viscosity and vice versa. This holds true for motor oil as well. The goal is to have an oil that doesn't get too thin at high temperatures or too thick at low temperatures. These additives consist of a relatively small amount of polymer in a diluent base oil. As the oil heats up, rather than letting the oil thin, the polymer expands, resulting in an oil maintaining its viscosity. When the oil cools, the polymer shrinks and allows for the oil to remain flowing. It is through this expansion and contraction that the polymer allows the oil to retain a higher or lower contribution to the overall viscosity, depending, of course, on the temperature of the oil. Now, we should talk about anti-wear and extreme pressure additives, since they can easily be confused for one another as their jobs are pretty similar. Anti-wear, or AW agents, usually use zinc dialkyl diethylphosphates to prevent excessive wear through metal-to-metal -metal contact in the boundary or mixed lubrication regime. Boundary lubrication is when oil or grease creates a layer or border between two surfaces coming into contact. ZDDPs work by adhering to the metal surface and act as a sacrificial barrier to any potential wear that could happen. These also help to protect the base oil from oxidation and the metal from damage by corrosive acids. Race cars or antique vehicles that have not been upgraded to modern standards require engine oil with extra ZDDP as they must endure intense wear and severe driving conditions. Meanwhile, extreme pressure or EP additives are more aggressive than AW additives. They react chemically with metal surfaces to form a surface film that prevents the welding and seizure of opposing asperities caused by metal-to-metal -metal contact. They are activated at high loads and by high contact temperatures. Typically, you will see EP additives in gear oils, and you can blame them for giving most gear oils that unique, strong sulfur smell. This is because these additives usually contain sulfur, phosphorus, and occasionally boron compounds. They can be corrosive towards yellow metals, especially at higher temperatures, and therefore should not be used in worm gears and similar applications where copper-based metals are used. Overall, anti-wear agents tend to be used in the average consumer-grade oil, while extreme pressure additives are used in more severe and industrial applications. Okay, so we covered additives in oil, but that begs the question, what about those aftermarket additives? Well, when it comes to aftermarket additives, there are plenty to choose from, but great consideration needs to be taken before tossing a bottle of some specialized additive into your oil, as they can sometimes cause greater harm than good. Here are two general rules to remember when thinking about using aftermarket additives. First, a low quality lubricant cannot be converted into a premium product simply by the inclusion of an additive. In the world of lubricants, you get what you pay for. This is part of the reason as to why synthetic oils are so expensive. They have been refined to such a high standard that they are some of the highest quality oils on the market. Secondly, base oils can only dissolve a certain number of additives. As a result, the add-on of supplemental additives into an oil that has a low level of solubility or 
is already saturated with other additives may simply mean that the new additives will settle out of the solution and remain at the bottom of the crankcase or sump. It may never carry out its intended purpose. Remember, too much of a good thing can be just as detrimental as not enough. If you choose to use any aftermarket additives or oil conditioners to a lubricated system, take the following precautions. Firstly, determine whether an actual lubrication problem even exists. For instance, an oil contamination problem is most often related to poor maintenance or inadequate filtration and not necessarily poor lubrication or poor oil quality. Secondly, choose the right supplemental additive or oil conditioner. This means taking the time to research the makeup and compatibility of the various products on the market. Research truly helps. The chemistry of oils can be as unique as the vehicles they're getting used in. As the automotive industry continues to grow and evolve, so does our needs for proper, high-quality engine oils. Nowadays, there are higher operating speeds, temperatures, and environmental aspects and regulations to consider. All of which call for longer life and more highly refined petroleum oils. Next time on Propel Oil 101, we'll get into the foundations of oil and the difference between a synthetic base oil and conventional base oil. But if you like what you've learned so far, why not subscribe to our channel or if you have any questions, you can leave us a comment, give us a call, or visit our website at gregdistributors.ca. Again, I'm Dave, and I'll see you on our next installment of Propel Oil 101, right here on Gear Up With Greg's.